I know you saw LeBron and Russell Westbrook make a cameo in Nas's brunch on Sundays video the other day from King's Disease 2. And Michael and I were talking about this. We haven't really like truly unpacked the fact that LeBron and Russell Westbrook are teammates. Uh, and so the Lakers treated us to a couple of snapshots on their Twitter account yesterday. Brunch on Sundays, work on Wednesday, showing them working out. So they're in the lab. Chris, I'd love to know what you're hearing and what you think in your expert opinion about how LeBron and Russ in particular, to say nothing of the rest of that roster, which is we know is full of 30-somethings, Carmelo Anthony and others, but how LeBron and Russ in particular are going to make this chemistry experiment work. We know they're in the lab. How's it going to work? Finals? in the NBA going into this season, how this group of players. Wait, Chris, Chris, I'm sorry. Chris, can you start that again? We, we didn't hear the beginning I, answer. Yeah, start again. Sorry, it's, it's, it's probably top. the most interesting question going into the NBA this season. I mean, how this group of players is able to mesh as, as a unit. Now, I've talked to half a dozen or more people inside and out of the Lakers organization asking that very same question. One thing I, I hear consistently is you're probably going to win as many or more regular season games with Russ on this team because Russ is kind of injury protection, right? Like if you have uh, an issue with LeBron or AD who's been chronically injured, uh, if one of them go down, Russ can step in and carry a team during the regular season. We've seen him do it at multiple stops in his career. The question is going to be when you get to the playoffs and you have so few shooters out there on the floor, how do you succeed at the highest level? I mean, Russ is always going to be a minus shooter in his position. The Lakers quietly traded away Mark Gasol this week. Gasol, for all of his uh, weaknesses, is still a pretty good perimeter shooter, at least a threat from beyond the three-point line. So at the one and right. at the five, you got measurably weaker when it came to perimeter shooting. And in the playoffs, not many teams guys win without high-level perimeter shooting. You know, with the, with their additions, with Westbrook coming there and then assuming AD is healthy and LeBron is healthy, I think a lot of people say, hey, the Lakers are the best team in the Western Conference. Do you buy that? Or do you look at Phoenix losing in the NBA Finals last year, bringing back Chris Paul, development of Ayton and development of Booker and say, yeah, the Phoenix would be right there. What do you say? Yeah, I think Phoenix is right there. I think Utah is potentially right there. We're, we're discounting the Clippers at this point because most are operating under the assumption that Kawhi Leonard is going to miss all of next season. The, the question I have with the Lakers, though, is why break it up? I mean, if the Lakers, if Anthony Davis doesn't get hurt in that series against Phoenix, the Lakers probably win. And then they probably go on to win the next two series. Then they get to the NBA Finals, and maybe they have a better chance than Phoenix did against Milwaukee. In the minds of a lot of people in the NBA, the Lakers had a formula for success. If they just brought back the group from last season, they also could have had, again, which is what I hear from most NBA types, a better formula if they had taken the assets needed to get Russell Westbrook and traded them north to Sacramento to get Buddy Heald, which was another deal that was on the table uh, for the Lakers. Heald would seem to be a perfect fit opposite LeBron and AD. Yeah. He's a 40-plus percent three-point shooter over the last four seasons. So, you know, maybe Rob Palenka, who has done some really good things with the Lakers in his time, is going to once again prove to be you know, a mad scientist. But right now, there are far more skeptics of this Lakers team ability to win a championship than there are people that believe mm -hmm. it. So uh, let's pivot to the guy that Russ was uh, last traded for, um, which is John Wall, uh, who's working with the Rockets on a trade. And reportedly, that may not happen anytime soon, as in there may not be a trade or a buyout this season. He may end up taking a sabbatical if you believe what's being reported. Love to hear your thoughts on that, as well as this, as well as this. Um, $91.7 million left. I know that trade is easier said than done. Um, mammoth player option after this season that he's obviously going to Gonna uh, gonna accept. Um, we were talking yesterday. You mentioned the Clippers. I think with Kawhi Leonard down, I think John Wall would be a good fit with the Clippers. They need they still need a point guard, uh, point guard help in my mind. Kawhi is down. Maybe he can hold down the fort while Kawhi is gone and help him help him and Paul George when he comes back. 
or and Michael thought I was crazy for this, Chris. I don't think that Daryl Moore is in position to be like, nah, that ain't good enough for Ben Simmons. That's a toxic situation that needs to be resolved. Pulling a third team, I'd like to see a John Wall, Joel and B pairing. I think that's a pretty good fit if you ask me. Not an ideal return, but beggars can't be choosers at this point if you ask me. I know I said a lot there, but just kind of break down the John Wall yeah. Houston situation. Yeah, you did. Best fits for him. Where you see the situation going? Well, the the right of the Rockets and John Wall are on the same page when it comes to trying to find John Wall a new home. But at, as several executives have said to me, the equivalent of John Wall asking for a trade is like me saying, I want a pony. Like, you're not going to get the pony. Like, it doesn't, <laughs> there isn't really a palatable deal out there involving John Wall. Remember, John Wall was traded just last year for another distressed asset with a massive salary, right. that being Russell Westbrook. Like, like you the said, guy he could be you, traded for. Like, he makes sense, of course, with the Clippers. He makes sense, of course, with Philadelphia. But how do you get there? Like, how do you get to the money that John Wall is owed without completely gutting your roster? The Clippers have almost no path to it. They're not going to trade Kawhi. They're not going to trade Paul George. It's just no. impossible, really, to cobble together the number of assets to get a deal done. Philadelphia, Makes sense, but not I, I don't, dollars. Yeah, they may. Yeah, exactly. Philadelphia, I don't see them. I, I look. John Wall would be interesting opposite uh, Joel Embiid because of his speed. Like John Wall last year was in great shape. Like he came off a serious injury and came back in phenomenal shape. But guys, he still is not a shooter. And the Sixers just went through this with a non-shooting point guard at that position. Now I just don't know why they they'd want to jump to get into bed well, with John Wall will shoot. At, at this point. <laughs> he will this shoot. He will, will shoot. shoot. <laughs> he will shoot. But again, his, high, his history, know. his history of injuries, guys, it just makes him, yeah. it makes him really tough to deal. He came back healthy last year. Again, he did some good things, but this is going to be a tough deal of threat. They're going to have to wait, I think, for another distressed asset like Westbrook to become available hmm. to make a trade like this. And for John Wall's sake, I hope he doesn't sit out regular season games. He's missed too many years in his prime for him to take mm -hmm. any kind of hiatus while he waits for a deal. Thanks for unpacking all, right, all that uh, Chris, Chris, uh, Michael Smith is convinced that I'm going to troll him on this. Uh, I'm not. I'm not trolling. I'm just going to ask you a question. Uh, you are very plugged in NBA insider. So I'm going beyond the back and forth that Kyrie Irving had with the media personality calling him a puppet. Then the guy goes back and says, blame your representation. I'm going beyond all that. To ask a very simple question and I'm serious here. Why would the Nets if it's true? Why would the Nets consider trading Kyrie Irving? Great shooter like last year 50% from the field 40% from three 92% from the line uh, played well with Durant played well with Harden. Why would you consider trading that guy? Well, I think you would consider it because the Nets fully believe that they can win with James Harden and Kevin Durant as the two alphas. And if there's a deal that can bring back, you know, three or four different pieces that flesh out the bench with younger players. Right now, you're looking at the Blake Griffins and LaMarcus Aldridge's and all the older players that have latched on with Brooklyn. If you can get three or four pieces that complement Durant and Harding, they believe in Brooklyn that these guys are enough for them to win a championship. I mean, look, they were probably a foot, you know, Durant's toe on the line last year against Milwaukee for winning that series go. and maybe oh, going on. Chris, that right there. I mean, Chris, don't, don't, don't say that to, don't say that to Michael. Like, he, that I mean, triggers right him. There. That triggers, I say, right there. Don't, that triggers him something serious. I'm just saying, I'm not, like, no, no, it, I'm not the problem, for it. Michael, the, the problem is, the problem is, <laughs> as far as I can tell, there isn't a team out there that wants to get in the Kyrie Irving business right now. They just don't. I mean, especially how about you know, Kyrie would have to Kyrie like would have to want to go there. Does Brooklyn like him? Do they like him? Because I'm I'm thinking when I hear about Kyrie Irving trade, I think general manager Kevin Durant wouldn't allow that to happen. Or am I just you know looking past a situation that's obvious and I and I don't see it? No, I, look, I think he'd. I I don't think Durant would. You know throw a fit if Kyrie was traded for pieces that can, you know, make that team considerably better. Remember, initially it was Durant and Kyrie that came on board. Now it's Durant, Harden, and Kyrie that are on board with that group. But again, this is kind of like the John Wall conversation. Like, you know, Kyrie would have to embrace 
being traded to a place. And one thing I know about Kyrie Irving and, and Mike and both of you guys really know this from the Boston area. He has long wanted to choose his own fate. He, he was so upset for years about the fact that is, even though he won with LeBron, he didn't choose to play with LeBron. He was in Boston, didn't choose to play there. He chose to go to Brooklyn mm. to play with Kevin Durant. So if he gets shipped to another situation, I don't see him. I, I can see Kyrie being un, unhappy. And I know my friend Nick Wright reported it. I, I even see him saying, screw it. I'm going to retire. 